Hi, I'm Tim Bergland with Star Tree. Welcome to Pinot 101. What is Apache Pinot? Apache Pinot is a real-time distributed OLAP database designed to serve analytical workloads on streaming data with extreme low latency and high concurrency. Well, there's a lot there, so let's walk through what all those terms mean. First of all, essentially, what do I mean by real-time analytics? That term, real-time, is notoriously fuzzy. A lot of people just use it to mean fast, you know, and that's not very helpful. So to be a little more concrete, let me define it in terms of these three categories, latency, concurrency, and freshness. Latency is just how long it takes to execute a query. Concurrency is how many different queries the database might be serving at one time. Is it just a few or is it, is it really a lot? And freshness, since this database is doing analytics on streaming data, freshness has to do with how much time goes by from the event happening out in the world until it's in the database and it can show up in query results. So those three categories, latency, concurrency, and freshness, those I think get at the heart and soul of what we mean by real-time analytics. And to put some meat on the bones here, I want to say latency ought to be, in the best case, in the tens of milliseconds, maybe small single-digit tens, 10, 20, 30 milliseconds. Some queries might take longer, but we can, we can get there. We can get to that fast. Concurrency, we want to be able to crank that up to hundreds of thousands of concurrent queries per second. So that's one database, one distributed database, one Pinot cluster, uh, satisfying hundreds of thousands of queries per second. That's very different from traditional analytics database technologies. And freshness, the time from an event happening out in the world, making its way through maybe a few streaming pipelines, a few Kafka topics and stream processors and you know whatever is going on out in the world before it gets into the database, that needs to be just seconds, single digit seconds or less. Uh, in fact, in the case of Pino, as soon as an event is consumed from whatever streaming source it happens to be in, it's ready for queries. So Pino is obsessed with optimizing these three characteristics for real-time analytics applications. It's a distributed database. Now this is fairly common these days for data infrastructure, but it's still a choice. Not every database is distributed, Pino is, and really what do we mean by that? Well, traditional, say relational database technologies, storage and compute are all in one place. They're designed as single node, for the, for the most part, single process databases. Uh, and there's lots of simplifying assumptions that that lets you make, but of course it also imposes limitations on scale. And historically, we've taken that same architecture, that same single process architecture, and done things like read replication and sharding, and those work, those can get some life out of that paradigm, but at the expense, as I so gently put it here, of some operational and functional cost. That is, it's very hard to make it work, and it's pain to use. Pinot is distributed from the ground up, and there are ways that it will allow you to scale query processing and storage semi-independently so you can end up with a cluster configuration fairly well customized to your workload. And that scale out of, of storage and query processing, uh, those things can go to, to fairly arbitrary limits. So this is a database capable of handling petabyte size workloads. An important choice that Pino makes, and we'll only kind of cover this lightly in this course, uh, is that it chooses for storage and compute to be coupled tightly and compute to be pre-allocated. So the actual nodes in this cluster that are storing data and the, the place where the query processing happens, those are, those are close by. So you've got a, a CPU and local disk and most of the query processing is happening there over that very high bandwidth connection. Because again, from the ground up, Pino is built for very low latency, very high concurrency, and very fresh data. And so that tight coupling of those two uh, and the, the pre-allocation of all those compute resources uh, are trade-offs that we have to make in order to get the performance that we want. Pinot is optimized for analytical workloads, or it's an OLTP database. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look here. In the transactional world, or the OLAP world, uh, we tend to be focused on transactions. A thing happens in the world, and we want to record that thing in our data store. Uh, you know, maybe if a thing changes about some entity that we're modeling, we want to record that change in our data store. There's usually a focus on a, a single thing, an object, an entity, an order, a thermostat, a truck, a train, a shipment, some entity in the world, and we're usually focused on reading and writing that one thing. Um, often, 
uh, OLTP databases are optimized for write traffic because they tend to be write heavy workloads. In the case of OLAP or uh, an analytical database, which is what Pino is, there tends to be a focus on lots of things. You want to you want to look at a lot of records, maybe some measurement, some metric, and scan a bunch of values and compute some aggregation, run some reducing function like average or sum or maximum or something like that over over uh, all those values. So rather than a focus on a single record, there tends to be a focus on lots of records and aggregating a single value across those records after maybe having done some kind of filtering of a large data set. So this produces a more read heavy workload. And so we tend to see things optimized for that, that read path. Although of course, high-speed ingestion doesn't go away as a concern. That's also very important. Pino's data model borders on being uninteresting, and that is wonderful news. It just uses tables. You already understand this. There are rows, uh, there are columns, the data types are all the usual suspects. So there just happily isn't very much to learn here. You create tables, you define indexes, uh, you assign column names and data types, all that kind of stuff. Now, one departure from the SQL standard here is that rather than an incredibly elaborate create table statement with some kind of options block with parentheses and a bunch of key value pairs like, like SQL extensions tend to do. We just do those things in JSON. So the schema for a table is defined in JSON and the other configuration data for a table is defined in JSON as well. In another module in this course, uh, we'll look at some of that JSON and, and some of those details. Happily, queries are still expressed in good old structured query language. This is a SQL database, and there are some differences in the current version of Pino between ANSI SQL and things that Pino does. Those differences are getting smaller all the time, uh, but there, there isn't a lot of learning that you're gonna have to do about the query language itself. You're just gonna express yourself in SQL like you're used to doing. Who uses Pino and what do they use it for? Well, it is broadly adopted. It was originally created at LinkedIn and it is used all over the place in the ordinary kind of consumer use of LinkedIn and reading your feed and looking at who viewed your profile and interacting with posts. All of those involve lots of Pino queries. Uh, Uber is a heavy user um, in their, especially in their Uber Eats product. Um, similarly, DoorDash, lots of meal delivery services uh, use Pino. NVIDIA is a user, Stripe, and there are lots of other financial services uh, applications that are, that are really burgeoning right now. Walmart, WePay, even Guitar Center. So all kinds of different use cases, different companies, different sectors are making use of real-time analytics. So that is what Apache Pino is. There's much more to cover in this course, so let's get going.